Hey, it's 4.20 a.m. on February 1st. Hi, and welcome to a special Wheel of the Year in bulk edition of the Stoned Witches Hour with Shell and Layla. From February 1st to sundown on the 2nd is Imbolc here in the Northern Hemisphere and Lunasa in the Southern Hemisphere. Imbolc's a Gaelic traditional festival celebrating the midpoint of winter when the very first hints of spring and rebirth are observed. We honor the goddess at this time in her maiden form as Breed, the goddess of poetry, healing, and crafts. The themes of this time of year are fertility, new beginnings, clearing away the old, and the light strengthening over the dark. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So in bulk, I look at in bulk is it marks the beginning of spring. And above, it's all this snow-covered land. And then below, it's like the goddess like starting to like emerge from the dirt and starting to poke through a little bit of the snow. Oh, like Persephone starting to like come up and start the second half of the year. It reminded me as if a person were a seed breaking through. Like that green, that whole green Tara, the whole potential. The, that's what I love about this season because it is spring. To me, it is spring, even though it's technically not spring yet, especially in the Northeast, it's definitely doesn't feel like spring yet, but it is that potential is there that, like you said, that person as a seed, those that fertile ground that could be anything. Fertility doesn't necessarily have to mean baby. It could be the fertility. It could be a thought. It could be a thought. It could be an idea. It could be a plan. It could be a goal. Like Beautiful. You could, yes. You can plant the seeds to get a new job or you can plant the seeds to have a baby. Like whatever. Literally or figuratively. Right, right. Um, also, an interesting factoid with us Northeastern folk, like I'm telling you, you don't even know. We got dumped on like 30 inches of snow the other day. But, you know, this is actually, in bulk is the beginning of the agricultural year. Um, because, not that I'm a great planter, I swear I can only keep kids and cats alive. <laughs> you know, this is where people will start like putting the seeds kind of going inside before it is time for them to take them outside and then transplant them into the ground. So this is actually um, the beginning of the agricultural season, which I don't know, not in the Northeast, but it can, the agricultural season goes from Imbolc to Samhain, not where I live. <laughs> and, you know, I always talk about the tick of the, the wheel of the year. And this tick of the wheel of the year is, is halfway. And, and I think sometimes people forget that in the beginning of February, we are actually halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. So like, that's how I kind of make living in the Northeast not feel so bad because I follow those ticks. And this tick is telling me I am halfway to spring. <laughs> it's like when you're half, like when you're running, it's like I'm halfway to the finish line. We're, we're halfway there. But a spiritual aspect of this, you know, we talk about, you know, different symbolism and, and, and different, different ways people celebrate but you know as far as like a spiritual aspect this is kind of a time where you can like let go of your past and kind of look ahead you know i know that the end of the year beginning of the year is that Samhain threshold but some people like me i know that the beginning and the end of the year in my religion is Samhain but i know in the calendar it's january but like somehow i function on a for me, the beginning of the year is when I know things are getting warmer and brighter. Almost like that death phase of the year is over. Right, we're starting to come out of that. Things are starting right. to come up out of the ground. The whole Punxsutawney Phil, the whole Groundhog's right. Day, you know, things are emerging from the dark and coming up to the light this time of year. You know, you kind of shed that darkness and leave it behind. Living in the Northeast, I feel like there's never an end to winter. So it's kind of like, the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. It really is. It's the beginning of the end of winter. It's not done yet. Right. It's not done yet. And to kind of take it a, a, a little step deeper, you know, as it kind of is the next notch on the wheel of the year ticking, it also, as far as the triple goddess goes, it's kind of that turning point from where that crone then comes back again is the maiden. Let's see, the goddess Breed, 
right? Is she, mm-hmm. it's her day mostly. You yep. see her a lot. Candle mass. Is this the one where she has the, the, the crown, crown of, of, of candles, candles, right? Which can I just say for just a moment, like, Wow, how daring are you to wear a crown of candles? Like, seriously, my head would catch on fire. I right? It gives, you'd have to be some kind of, uh, you have to kind of like that thing a little bit, you know, a little bit of hot candle wax on your cheekbones, maybe. I would just move my eyeballs. But anyway. <laughs> you wear one of those visor hats. You're going to wear a crown of candles, burning candles. You're going to need like one of those visor hats that people wear for like golf or something. Right, right. And as much as I love the candle crown, love it. My hair would go up in a blaze of glory, but I love the candle crown. Some things, you know, obviously how the Celts celebrated in bulk however long ago is vastly different from 2022. But, you know, some of the, some of the easier ways to celebrate in bulk nowadays, light a candle in each room of your house. Or, you know, if you're not able to, light one candle in one room. No one is going to judge you. Um... And do it after sunset with that thought of bringing the sun back, that rebirth. Yeah, another way to represent the growing light and to do a room by room cleansing is with cannabis Um, instead of a candle or incense. It works the same way, spell wise. Grab your preferred smoking apparatus, a bong, bowl, pre roll, whatever you have. Take a nice sativa, like a lemon haze or whatever your favorite is. And as you go around room to room, inhale the cannabis smoke and Picture drawing in good energy, picture positive green healing energy and picture that coming into you and your home. And then as you exhale, you know, inhale the good, exhale the bad, just picture all the negative, all the bad energy flowing out of you and out of the house. And you can go and do that in every room, you know, one puff, three puffs, whatever feels good to you, you know, do that with intention in each space. And as you smoke, Each inhale and each exhale is part of that spell, as long as you do it with intention. You know, hold those images in your mind of drawing in all the good, all the health and the healing and the blessings that you are looking for in this coming season. And then exhale all the negative, anything that's against you or anything that no longer works for you, anything that you no longer should hold on to, you know, exhale that out and let it go. Just let it go. And do that in each room. And then when you're done with your bowl and you've gotten each room through, you know, thank that herb and, and maybe take those ashes and bury them outside or put them in the earth somewhere safe, just to kind of return that to the earth and complete that circle of the little ritual that you've done. You know, ritual can be found in all sorts of spaces and smoking cannabis for me, definitely has every element of a magic spell or ritual. And so when done with intention, it can be very powerful. Gives you that warmth is coming, summer's coming, the wheel is turning kind of vibe. Exactly. You know, it kind of, spellcraft and ritual is all about symbolism. It's all about symbolically representing something. And so by going room to room and lighting a candle there or a joint, Maybe even um, setting an intention for the spring or thinking thoughts of, of new things you want to rebirth or bring into your life. That symbolism of lighting a light and thinking a positive thought, that's the symbolism of the sun, like you said, getting stronger and bringing that light into your life. And so just like anything, it doesn't have to be a big ritual. It can be something as simple as going room to room and lighting a candle or lighting a bunch of your favorite candles while you're cooking dinner or while you're taking a bath. This is a personal thing, and this is not in any book and, you know, no law or nothing. But if you are into chakras and chakra cleansing, every holiday, and this is especially a good one when we're talking about clearing yourself, eight times a year, every holiday, easy to remember. A nice chakra cleansing is is a good way to kind of, no matter what the the holiday is, celebrate the holiday by kind of doing your own personal chakra cleansing and realignment. And I just like to kind of think of each holiday almost as like a calendar marker. Oh, it's in bulk. Let me clear things out. Do a cleansing, do a reassessment. I like that. At Yule, I had done the same thing, you know, hey, it's Yule, you know, kind of put things back in some sort of balance. I really like as a simple bath, something to help kind of cleanse and realign chakras 
is get myself a nice bath with some Epsom salts in it. Also into that bath, I'll put a stone for each chakra, you know, and along the side of the bath, maybe a candle in each color. And, you know, you get in that bath with intention, make sure that you do it with a purpose, you know, and light each candle as you visualize that chakra and you visualize that color and, and just kind of realigning and cleansing. And, and that's, we're taking something very big and distilling it down into very, very simple steps. And I get that. But if you want to learn more in depth, you could certainly look it up. But that's that's definitely a very simple way. And I love that you use the wheel of the year to remind yourself to do that because it's an excellent time and it's an excellent way to remember to, you know, to take time to cleanse yourself. And that's a super easy chakra bath. Well, you know, we get caught up in the day to day. We get caught up in work and parenting and in just life in general. And you forget some of those simple things that really kind of keep your head on straight, keep you in order. And Absolutely. And high magic is great. And high ritual is great. But, you know, if you're in the middle of classes or taking care of kids or your job or your relationship or whatever, sometimes you don't have time for that. Sometimes you don't have the mental capacity or the, the spoons for that. And sometimes so all you have time for is a bath. That's right. Sometimes all you have time for is a bath and to throw a few crystals in, light a couple candles, and that might be all you get to do. So you have to make sure right. your intention's there. And, you know, that's, that's, I think, what makes this path so wonderful for me is sometimes I just got to do this shit on the fly. You know, I don't have the time or the energy. Sometimes I don't have the energy. You know, kids work, that drains you. <laughs> It's all too easy to let things for ourselves slip aside, you know, right. especially in anything. A lot of people tend to, we'll do things for other people much more quickly than we'll do them for ourselves. So again, the, the, the wheel of the year, the holidays in bulk in particular is a great time to remind yourself to take care of yourself, go a little slower, you know, and, and just remember spring is coming and, you know, be good to yourself, take care of yourself. Right, right. In bulk is a great time to clear out the old and make space for something new. Spring cleaning is an excellent outer representation of inner cleansing work and inner clearing that you might be trying to do. As you're cleaning your house, you can envision all the things that don't serve you that are inside your head, inside your heart, cleaning them out, cleaning out old relationships, old arguments, old resentments, you know, old feelings, anything that no longer serves you, anything that's holding you back, anything that's keeping you from being the you that you want to be. Now's the time to clear all of that out. And what you find when you clear out that space is now you've got all this open space for new things to come in, new light, fresh sense, you know, in a literal sense, when you're cleaning, that's what you see. But, but in a mystical sense, what you've made space for is new beginnings, new hope, a new relationship, a new job, something, something new to begin in your life, new feelings about yourself, new, new sense of self, a new strength. It's difficult to do that sometimes when your, your brain is surrounded by the clutter of things that, that no longer work that aren't healthy or don't bring you joy or meaning. So another good thing to do this time of year, simple rituals, simple spells that you can do besides house cleaning is light your favorite incense, vanilla, rosemary, even mint this time of year is fabulous. And, and just let that kind of permeate your house and bring that fresh sense in. You know, decorate your altar in, in light colors, pastel shades, your whites and yellows, your favorite shades of spring, lilac. Uh, wear crystals like amethyst, which is the February birthstone. Wear um, clear quartz for clarity and fresh starts. Or citrine to celebrate the strengthening sun and to, and to bring that joyous light into your life and into your heart. You know, I kind of, I don't necessarily follow traditional crystal meanings all the time. You know... When you when you got two kids and you're living your life, sometimes you gotta be that witch on the fly and kind of do what's good in the moment and not what a book says. So sometimes I go by color. You know, like this is the time of year where I'm gonna carry, I'm gonna carry around, you know, an adventuring, a rose quartz, a clear quartz, maybe a cat's eye, or you know, I sometimes it's more on color. You know, the, the pink, the clear, the white, the light green, the yellow, things that make me feel like this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. Buying the daffodils and the tulips and, 
you know, having fresh plants growing in your house and having the, the lighter colored stones. Although after our big snowstorm up here uh, in the Northeast, I think I'm ditching the white stone for now. I've had enough <laughs> white in my life. <laughs> You're done with the snow. Don't blame me one bit. Now we just got to see if that old Punxsutawney Phil sees his shadow. That's right. That's coming up really soon, like tomorrow. <laughs> like tomorrow. So yeah, so I guess we shall see. Spring is coming. Well, it's definitely coming. Whether that uh, that old rodent, what the hell is he again? Groundhog? He's a groundhog. <laughs> Whether that groundhog sees it or not, it's definitely coming. Now, you know, we joke that you have said spring clean in more times than Jesus, but... <laughs> Did Jesus really say spring cleaning? Is that he might have. That? <laughs> he might have. Jesus says, thou shalt clean your kitchen. But the reason behind it, the reason that this is kind of that clean out time is because this is the time for new beginnings and you got to make room for new beginnings. You can't have fresh perspective. You can't have a new beginning. Like you got to make room for that. It's like a hoarder. You can't bring in more shit if you still got too much shit. That is so, so true. So true. Where's that relationship going to go? I mean, right. if you are still keeping all this spiritual clutter, all this mental clutter that you just can't let go of. Get rid of your shit. How are you bringing in good? How are you bringing in change? And you can't. I mean, not unless you do the work of clearing space first. Whether you have an elaborate Sabbath ritual or with a coven or a community of friends, or if you celebrate by yourself simply with a lit candle going room to room, or just a few minutes of solo meditation, if you can, make space for yourself, make time for yourself, take a moment to reflect on letting go of what doesn't serve you and what you no longer have need for. You know, sometime between February 1st and 2nd, make a little space for yourself. You know, if you can, do a little spring cleaning, clean off an altar, refresh it, you know, bring in some new herbs or some new crystals and do something for yourself. Make that space so that things can grow for you in this next turning of the wheel of the year. But for all of our listeners, we do want to say that we do wish you a very happy in bulk. Um, we hope you are able to celebrate in whatever way fits, fits your need and, and fits your time and space. And we do really, really hope that you are able to set the intentions and the goals that you hope to reach. So again, happy in bulk to everyone. I love that so much. Happy in bulk to all of our listeners. Thank you so much for joining this journey with us. And, and happy birthday, Layla. And happy birthday, me. Yay. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to our special in bulk episode of the Stoned Witches Hour. Join us on Wednesday for our regularly scheduled episode. And throughout the year, keep an eye out for any other special episodes where we go over holidays, spellcraft, ritual work, or answer your questions about paganism, ceremony, spells, whatever it might be. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, or email us at thestonewitcheshour at gmail.com. Blessed be.